What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another very, very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I am so glad you guys decided to tune in for this episode because I'm in shorts, I'm in a t-shirt, and it's sunny out. I am so happy. I can't even, I can't even explain it in words how happy I am because it's just a feeling. There's no words to describe it. It's just a feeling. The first really nice day of the year has finally arrived. Um, the bees are out. The flowers are blooming. Everyone's out just having a good day, mowing their lawn, walking their dogs. It's just a wonderful day. So uh, I thought I'd come outside to do some gardening. And uh, unfortunately, I can't do all the gardening I'd like to do because our nights are still quite cold. Even though we're out here today and it feels like you know, early summer, uh, the nights are still in the high 30s to low 40s. And it'll be that way for probably another week or two. So I just decided I'd come outside today to kind of work with the crops that I could plant outside and not really try to fight mother nature, not try to push the envelope because there's really no need to. And I always say this, I, I say this because it's so important. You know, a lot of times people think that if they don't get their garden in to a specific date, that they're going to be behind, they're not going to have a successful garden, and it's actually exactly the opposite. You know, if you try to set a specific date in mind, and that date is not what mother nature had intended, you're going to have a failed garden, plain and simple, and she doesn't care anything about it. <laughs> mother nature will just decimate your garden, and, uh, and she won't apologize for it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so basically, I always say, go by the weather. Don't try to fight it. This year is exceptionally late. I've said it a hundred times. I'll probably say it a hundred more times. I have no clue what's been going on these past couple years, but it has been freak weather. So uh, we're just, we're so late this year that normally by this time I'd already have tomatoes in the ground, but we're about three weeks late and I still have to wait about another week. So that's about four weeks behind schedule. But you know, like I said, my tomatoes are doing fine in the basement. I bring them outside on a sunny day like this to harden them off, which we'll have a video on by the way and uh, just kind of walking you through how to harden your plants off and stuff like that. I think that'll be next episode actually. Um, and uh, so I'm hardening them off in the warm weather when I can. And uh, I'm just waiting for that time when I feel like it's safe to plant. Um, but today it's really safe to plant these. <laughs> these are our onions and it looks like, it doesn't look like cat grass or like, it looks like a, you know, a, a big thing of grass just growing up. These are actually our onions. Now we have onions and we have shallots and uh, we also have chives. So I wanna get them in the ground because they're very cold hardy, they can tolerate it, and they really do, these ones kinda do need to be transplanted because they've been in here for quite a while. And one of the questions I get asked all the time is, Luke, what on earth are you thinking when you plant that many seeds in a flat of this size? I mean, what are you thinking? Are you crazy? And the answer is no, I'm not crazy. Um, I actually have been doing this now for uh, three or four years. I actually learned how to do this at the greenhouse. We did, we had a commercial, well, I worked at a commercial greenhouse and we had a section of, of onions and we would go and seed them out because everything was by seed there. And when I first saw it, I thought, what on earth are they having me do? Is this person crazy? I mean, there's no way these are gonna grow. And they explained to me that, that onions uh, have very fibrous roots and they could actually be divided out when they're about this age, um, you know, their, their, their leaves are just these green tops here. So they don't have leaves that you can really damage. They don't really have a crown that you can damage by pulling things out. You can kind of be pretty rough with them and they're almost impossible to kill. Now, obviously impossible is still possible for some people. I understand that, but you know, I've never been able to actually harm them by planting them like this, especially even dividing them out, which you'll see. Um, and that's what I think is really the importance of this episode is just showing you how resilient these onions are to being planted this way because I seeded them this way and I said I would show you an update. So that's today's episode. It's kind of that update. And I will post a link to me seeding this tray out when I first did that in the description box below so you can kind of see how densely I seeded and show you that you know the, the, the results are possible. Um, and if you've been following this channel for any length of time uh, last year, we actually grew some of the biggest onions and had the largest onion harvest we ever had. And that was by densely seeding our onions in a tray like this. And when they got bigger, we just transplanted them out. They had no problem getting large. They had no stress. There was no, you know, no, nothing, no ill effects whatsoever. There's probably maybe 2,500 to 3,000 plants in here. I won't need all of these plants and some of them I'll discard because they're small and weak and I'm just gonna pick the nice strong healthy ones that are gonna grow out to be larger onions. But if I were to select every single one of these and put just one plant in each cell 
assuming one plant, or assuming those seeds sprouted, I had 100% germination, I would need roughly 30 to 35 of these trays just to get what I have in one. That's how insane this is. And so it really helps to cut down on space, and it really helps you to just be more efficient with uh, not only the materials that you have, but the space that you have. So that's kind of the, the spiel on that, and I really love doing it. It's an incredible method for, for sowing these things, and onions are really one of the only crops you can do that with. Any allium, like onions, chives, shallots, you can do that with, um, because they just have the most fibrous roots you can imagine. All right, let's get in here. I just, uh, oh, I prepped the bed. I thought I'd go through this real quick too. So I prepped the bed like I normally do. This bed here had our lettuce in it last year. So it's just kind of a, a good crop rotation because the lettuce takes a lot of the nitrogen out of the soil and it allowed me to re-amend the soil with some good compost, rock dust, azomite, uh, or sorry, at rock dust, which is azomite and trifecta plus. Um, I also sprinkled some worm castings over top of the soil here. And then I just kind of raked it in. I don't ever turn my soil really heavily because I don't believe in really aggressively flipping the soil. Number one, it's not necessary because you have raised beds and the soil quality in your raised beds should be really good already. Number two is when you flip the soil, it actually uh, disrupts the soil structure. It moves the bottom to the top and the top to the bottom and everything just gets all discombobulated. And I like to let things settle just like nature would have intended with the exception of a little roughing up of the surface. The surface will kind of cake just a little, little bit on the surface of the soil. And when you work it up, it kind of just helps the soil to become one again. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I have the onions that I really wanna make sure that I get in my garden, in this garden. So I'm going to get those out first, and I'm just kind of going to work through the varieties from most important to kind of least important. I'm obviously gonna have a lot of plants left over, and those are going to go in either other beds, containers, or up at our cottage garden. So I'm gonna start here in the middle, and I'm just gonna pull out these zebru or these uh, these Kelsey onions. These Kelsey onions are our competition onions, and so we want to make sure we get these in the garden. As you can see, the root system is very entangled, but you'll notice that the roots do not have the fibrous, or they are very fibrous and they're very kind of wiry, but they don't have that that kind of webby, entangled structure like other roots have. And so all we're going to do is we're simply going to take the plant and we're just going to pull it straight down. And you'll notice there's your plant, there's your roots. And they really just untangle. I mean, it's, it's not even like they're knotted up or anything. You'll tear some roots, don't get me wrong. But again, the onions don't really mind. That tiny, minute amount of root damage, they don't really care about that much, to be honest with you. And I just separate them out. And it helps sometimes, you know, if they're really knotted up at the bottom, just kind of give them a little bit of a twist like that. There, that really helped. There. And they just pull right out. And that's how you do your onions. That's how you separate them. You'll notice all of them are coming out with roots. The roots that they do have are almost like, like uh, angel hair pasta. Now I'm gonna space these onions out about every three inches on center. Three inches on center is what we always talk about with our high intensity spacing. You know, if you space, if the spacing is suggested at six inches, that means you wanna space it out three inches on center. That means there's gonna be three inches and three inches giving you a total of six inches. So many people wanna space their stuff out six inches and six inches. And that means you have a total of 12 inches. That's really not necessary for something like onions. It's excessive. You're gonna waste a lot of space and there's gonna be a lot of extra space for weed seeds to sprout. So that is what I always recommend. So what we're gonna do is just plant every three inches. And one last final tip about planting your onions is do not ever bury them deeper than the first leaf. So many people want to bury them up on the neck like this. 
I never bury my onions any more than the white part of the onion. You'll see the white part on all of your onions. In the light, it's a little difficult, but you'll see the white part. That's the, that's the very, very small bulb that's forming. If you bury up past the onion like this, very deep, as that onion forms, number one, soil is going to come in and compress in. It's going to reduce the size of your onion. Number two is you're going to often have what's called center die out. And center die outs where dirt and debris gets inside of the leaves and it rots out the center of the onion because these first leaves here, these first leaves are, you know, those are the outside of the onion, right? And so since those are the outside of the onion, everything else that forms is the inside of the onion. You do not want dirt to get inside of the, new, the newly formed onion because there's bacteria and, and mildews and funguses and things like that that are going to get in there and that's what really shortens the lifespan of your onion. So don't do that and just bury it up, bury it no more than where that first leaf comes out. And that's why a lot of the onions that I grow look like they're sitting right on top of soil surface. Every time I grow my onions, uh, people always ask, Luke, do they ever top over or tip over? Do they look really top heavy. Um, do they ever you know, kind of fall over and grow oblong, things like that? And the answer is no, they don't. They look like they're gonna fall over. Don't get me wrong. I, all the time I look at that, I'm like, how are you still, at the end of the season, when they're ready to harvest, I'm like, how are you still standing up? I mean, it's, you've got two pounds of leaves and you're right on top of soil surface. I mean, there's, there's maybe this much soil covering the bulb and that's because that's how they grow. Just the, uh, the center of gravity is so centered on top of that bulb and the roots really anchor itself in that they don't ever fall over. I've never had a problem with it. So give it a shot. I think you'll really, I think you'll really like the results and uh, I think you'll end up with better quality onions in the long run. So that's all I got for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm gonna get out here. I'm gonna plant the rest of these onions out and uh, hopefully you guys are having a great gardening season so far, even if it's late. Um, the fact of the matter is spring will come, the gardening season will arrive and, uh, and you'll be able to be out in the garden enjoying your garden soon enough. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel, reminding you to grow big or go home. And we'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.